A Texas-based company is spending millions of dollars to try to bring back the Tasmanian tiger, an animal extinct since the 30s. The DNA technology involves taking cells from the tiger's closest living relatives and splicing them with Tasmanian tiger DNA. Ben Lamb, co-founder and CEO of Colossal Laboratories and Biosciences, is here now to tell us more about it. Ben, my mind is blown. This sounds like something out of Jurassic Park. So. How does it work and how close is this to becoming a reality? Yeah, we, we do get the uh, Jurassic Park reference quite a bit, you know, with the old de-extinction of extinct animals uh, part of our business. But uh, essentially we take DNA, I think you nailed it when you, you kind of framed it when we started to talk. Uh, you take the DNA and we sequence the DNA from exists from the closest living phylogenetic relative of in the living animal of the Tasmanian tiger. So in this case, that's the fat tailed Dunark. And then we do comparative analysis to actually understand the genes and the traits that are different and how that's kind of changed and evolved. We learn a lot about the evolutionary history of these animals. And then we use CRISPR and some of these gene editing technologies to actually engineer a, a new cell or embryo that we either put in a surrogate animal uh, or in an artificial womb that we're also developing. Uh, why are you focusing on the Tasmanian tiger? Well, it's, it's a, so we only focus on animal. You know, last year we announced the woolly mammoth. Now we've, we started talking about that we're working on the, ta the Tasmanian tiger as our second species. We only focus on animals that man had a hand in their extinction. And by bringing them back, they can actually fill an ecological void left by their absence. And the Tasmanian tiger is a tragedy. It's, it's a terrible story where they were 100% hunted uh, to extinction by mankind. Uh, and there were actually bounties put on their heads uh, by the Australian government because there was this rumor, which is completely unsubstantiated and isn't true, that they were actually killing livestock and sheep when in reality, the, the sheep are actually being killed and stolen by competing uh, uh, livestock farmers. And so there's no data that shows that, that the thylacine or Tasmanian tiger ate anything you know, small or larger than a small marsupial. So what benefit is there to bringing the Tasmanian tiger back to life? So I, I don't know if you've heard about the Tasmanian devil, which is a critically endangered species. And one of the reasons why they've been going extinct in recent years is they actually have this terrible facial tumor disease, which spreads. It starts with a sick population, and then it actually spreads to to others, uh, and then the, then the entire uh, uh, the entire population starts to get sick and die off. What's what's incredible about the thylacine and Tasmanian tiger is that it was the only marsupial predator. It was the apex predator of the entire uh, uh, lower southern Australia and, and Tasmania. And typically, apex predators will pick off the sick and wounded of a, of a species that and kind of keep that uh, it, uh, keep that all in effect. It's called trophic downgrading. So the reintroduction of a keystone species, specifically a carnivore, like what happened in Yellowstone back in the 90s, shows that like when you reintroduce these keystone species that once were there, they play a fundamental role in balancing that ecosystem so that the smaller animals don't get over, uh, uh, there's not too much of a population that starts to, uh, to breed and occur. Now, you plan on introducing these animals then back into their former natural habitats. How do you think that it'll impact the animals that are currently there. Do you worry about this backfiring? You know, it's a, it's a great question. It's, you're talking about uh, intended and unintended uh, consequences. And so we're, we work very, very closely with uh, governments, with local indigenous uh, people groups, and then also uh, top conservationists and rewilding experts. And so the, we will actually have Tasmanian tigers and mammoths uh, before we even reintroduce them back into the wild. It will be, it's a longer process to reintroduce them back into the wild because you've got to be really, really thoughtful and you can, you got to be really thoughtful and measured about it. And so there's so many incredible cases out there like, you know, uh, the, the case I mentioned earlier with Yellowstone where rewilding, you know, is shown to work when you're thoughtful about it and when you're and, and when you're measured about that that approach. And so we, we're not only you know hopeful, but we're counting on it, uh, the reintroduction of the Tasmanian tiger back into the ecosystem to help you know control populations of some of the smaller marsupials and, and other invasive species that have been introduced into Australia. All right, life finds a way. Ben Lamb, we'll be keeping an eye out for news from you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.